Hello students, let's start with a new topic from the chapter Compressible Fluid Flow. Today we'll learn about the properties of thermodynamics. Let's start with the introduction part. In general, all the fluids are compressible. But in any fluid flow system, if the density of the fluid does not change appreciably, then the fluid may be treated as the incompressible fluid. However, when the density changes are appreciable, the compressibility of the fluid needs to be taken into account in the analysis of such fluid flow phenomena. Significant density changes may be usually produced in a gas if the velocity, that is either of the gas itself or the body moving through it approaches or exceeds the speed of propagation of sound through the gas if the gas is subjected to sudden acceleration or if there are very large changes in the elevation. The compressibility is also significant in certain problems involving the flow of water and one such example is the phenomena of water hammer in Pipes. Now, in this chapter, the discussion is, however, confined to only those problems of fluid flow which involves the variation of density of highly compressible fluids such as gas due to the changes of pressure and velocity. The density of gas is related to both the pressure and the temperature, and all the changes of density are governed by certain law of thermodynamics. So let's start with some basic relationships of thermodynamics. The first is isothermal and adiabatic process. So we must also know what is meant by isothermal and adiabatic process. So in this particular slide, you will come to know what is isothermal and adiabatic process. So when the physical property of gas such as pressure, density and temperature changes due to compression or expansion of the gas. It is said to undergo a process. So whenever there is change in pressure, density or temperature, either it may take place due to expansion or due to compression. A process is undergone by a gas. A gas may be compressed or expanded either by an isothermal process or by an adiabatic process. Now what is isothermal process? An isothermal process is that in which the temperature is held constant and it is governed by Boyle's law according to which Pv is equal to P1V1 is equal to P2V2 which is equal to constant. So now P upon rho is equal to P1 upon rho 1 which is also equal to P2 upon rho 2 which is again held constant. P upon omega is equal to P1 upon omega 1 which is equal to P2 upon omega 2 which is constant. Now this 3 is termed as equation 1. On the other hand, if during the course of a process the gas neither absorbs heat from nor gives heats to its surrounding then the process is said to be area Batic. An adiabatic process is governed by the following law. Pv raised to the power k is equal to P1V1 raised to the power k which is equal to P2V2 raised to the power k which is constant. P upon rho raised to the power k is equal to P1 rho 1 raised to the power k is equal to P2 upon rho 2 raised to the power k which is again constant. P upon omega raised to the power k is equal to P1 upon omega 1 raised to the power k equal to P2 upon omega 2 raised to the power k which is again constant and this 3 is my equation 2. In the above equation P is the pressure, V is the specific volume, rho is the mass density, W is the weight density that is omega and K is the adiabatic index. The adiabatic index is given by K is equal to 
CP upon CV that is the ratio of specific heat at constant pressure CP and specific heat at constant volume CV for air and other diatomic gases in the usual range of temperature and pressure the value of K is equal to 1.4 the process is said to be reversible if the gas and its surrounding could subsequently be completely restored to the initial conditions by adding to or extracting from the gases exactly the same amount of heat and work taken from it during the process. A frictionless adiabatic process is a reversible process and it is often termed as isotropic process because as indicated later in this process, the entropy does not change. However, a reversible process is ideal. That is, it is never achieved in practice. There are some actual processes which are not isentropic so that PV raised to the power K is not constant, but in which the relationship between P and V or density is given to a reasonable approximation by P multiplied by V raised to the power n is equal to constant or P upon P raised to the power n is equal to constant where n is a positive constant. Such processes are termed as polytropic processes. The next is equation of state. The density rho of a particular gas is related to its absolute pressure P and absolute temperature T by equation of state which for perfect gas takes the form P is equal to rho RT or rho V is equal to MRT where R is the gas constant and V is the volume occupied by mass M of the gas. The absolute temperature is expressed in kelvins that is K when the temperature is measured in degree Celsius and it is given by T absolute is equal to Tk which is equal to 273.15 plus certain degree Celsius. Next is internal energy. The energy possessed by the molecule of a fluid due to the molecular activity is termed as internal energy or microscopic energy. It is to be distinguished from the external or macroscopic energies that is kinetic and potential energy associated with the fluid mass. The internal energy is a property of the fluid which cannot be measured directly but manifests itself in the terms of temperature that is either high or low temperature implies high or low internal energy respectively. If some quantity of heat is supplied to a certain mass of gas, a part of it may be stored in the gas as internal energy thus producing the rise in the temperature of the gas and the remaining part of the heat supplied may be utilized in increasing the volume of the gas thus we are doing some kind of external work. The first law of thermodynamic. The first law of thermodynamic states that the total heat H supplied to a gas must be equal to the increase in the internal energy that is I2 minus I1 of the gas plus the external work W done by the gas in expanding. Thus H is written as I2 minus I1 plus W. However, if instead of heating the gas is cooled then the heat will be rejected from the gas and hence H becomes negative. The value of I2 minus I1 may also be negative if the internal energy of the gas is decreased. Further, W is negative if the gas is compressed and consequently contracts in volume which means that work is done on the gas from some external source. 
this is my equation number three for isothermal process the temperature remains constant i2 minus i1 becomes zero and hence h is equal to w on the other hand for adiabatic process there being neither addition nor removal of heat h is equal to zero and hence w plus i2 minus i1 is equal to zero so this becomes w i1 minus i2 now over here it is i2 minus i1 if it goes on the right hand side so we have adjusted the negative sign and then hence it becomes w is equal to i1 minus i2 the work done by a gas in expanding or on a gas in contracting is given by w is equal to integration of p dv from the limits v1 to v2 and this is nothing but my equation number 4 for isothermal process introducing the value of p from equation 1 in equation 4 and integrating it we obtain w is equal to p1 v1 log to the base e v2 upon v1 will be equal to p1 v1 log to the base e multiplied by p1 upon p2 also w is equal to k log to the base e v2 upon v1 is equal to k log to the base e p1 upon p2 and this is my equation number 4a in which k is constant of equation 1 now equation 4a gives the work done per unit mass or per unit weight of the gas depending upon the specific volume being considered as the volume per unit mass or per unit weight of the gas respectively similarly for adiabatic process introducing the values of p from equation 2 in equation 4 and integrating it we obtain w is equal to 1 upon k minus 1 multiplied by p1 v1 minus p2 v2 and now this is my equation 4 b equation 4b gives work done per unit mass of the gas if the specific volume is considered as volume per unit mass of the gas however if the specific volume is considered as volume per unit weight of the gas then equation 4b gives work done per unit weight of the gas and it may be expressed as W is equal to one upon k minus one multiplied by p one upon omega one minus p two upon omega two. Next is entropy. Entropy of a gas may be defined as the measure of the maximum heat energy available for conversion into work. It is a property of the gas and it varies with absolute temperature. and its state if delta h is the heat transferred per unit weight of the gas in a small intervals of time and if t is the absolute temperature of the gas at that instant then the change in entropy delta phi is defined by the relation delta phi is equal to delta h upon t or i can say phi 2 minus phi 1 is equal to integration from t1 to t2 of delta h upon t for isothermal process since the temperature remains constant so now this becomes phi 2 minus phi 1 is equal to h by t but in the adiabatic process since there is no transfer of it delta h is equal to 0 so phi 2 minus phi 1 is equal to 0 or i can say phi remains constant a process in which the entropy does not change is termed as isentropic process however entropy does not change in adiabatic process only if it is frictionless a frictionless adiabatic process is therefore termed as isentropic which is also reversible next is enthalpy the sum of the internal energy and pressure specific volume product 
that is either pressure divided by mass density or pressure divided by weight density is termed as enthalpy and now it is also converted into heat units it is a purely mathematical quantity the consideration of which simplifies certain calculations since in several problems of thermodynamics this occurs thank you